On the bench today, I have a interesting carving project. It's carving a memorial inscription for in oak paneling for a church. So the ultimate project will look like this once it's installed. So what I've done is laid out the inscription on a full-scale working drawing that has uh, details of measurements and so on. Here I've laid out a margin line on each side of the panel. And the inscription. In order to judge line spacing and uh, kerning between the letters and the words. So, my method is to take that uh, working drawing and transfer it to the oak panel. in loving memory. So uh, I'll just uh, demonstrate my method for doing that. So here I've laid out uh, on the working drawing base lines and cap lines. And I've done the same on the oak panel, I think you'll be able to see them just faintly drawn uh, right here, here, and here. Here's the baseline and the cap line. So I've carefully measured those out vertically along the panel and then drawn them in with T-square right on the panel. So that guides the vertical placement of the words. Oh, and also about vertical placement. Usually, I'm laying out blocks of text like this a little bit above center. So here's the size of the panel here, the bottom edge of the panel, and the side edge. And uh, so, Usually I'm laying that out so the block of the text is just slightly above centered. But here I have a specific requirement on this project to center the uh, block of text exactly vertical. Um, so here I've got eight inches to the t cap line of the top line in the block of text and eight inches to the baseline for vertical centering. Okay, so my for my method of transferring the letters and words is to use uh, transfer paper, kind of like the old fashioned carbon copy paper. So here, I'll just show you on this last word in this line and how that goes. So I have the transfer paper in place. And I just put tick marks here. I don't trace all of every letter. I just put tick marks, and you'll see how that works in a minute. Now I can see the way I laid this out that the uh, 
cross piece in this end is a little too wide. I'm just using my eyeball judgment on that. So I'm making my tick mark a little narrower than that. Now on the D, I'll just trace this outer line. All right. So here, let's see. So here's my tick marks, A, N, and D, tracing on the outer line of the D. All right. So my first step is to take the T square and the little square. And following those, the uh, tracing there, I'll just do the vertical, verticals of the stems using the T square and the square just to keep things lined up nice and square. I could sketch that in by hand and eye and get them vertical enough, but this just, uh, expedites the process. So here's the vertical stem of the D. All right. So done with the T square on that word. Now for the A, it didn't have any vertical uh, stems. So here, I'll just use the triangle as a straight edge. And the crossbar on the A, I'll uh, just sketch in by eye. I've carved enough of these letters that I know some of the shapes, practically all of them. Although on this project, I had a new shape. This is the first time I've carved an ampersand. And there's three of them in this inscription. So those will be fun to carve. All right, back to the word in. So uh, here we are finishing up the in. All right. And the D. Here's that curved outer line. You can see it's pretty faint here on the tracing and the transfer. But here in person, I can see enough of it. And here I'll just sketch in the inner edge of that D form. So there's the word and laid out on the oak panel. Now, of course, there's some other parts to these letters, like the serifs, which I could sketch in. Like this.
And over here on this word, there's a bunch more of them. Both these ends have them. But you'll see on the rest of these letters that I don't usually sketch in those serifs. I just carve them. I've done so many serifs that I know the shape that, and size that they ought to have, so I don't bother sketching them in. Here I just sketch them in for your delight. All right. Now, as I'm forming and shaping these letters and drawing them out here on the layout, I have reference material. These are photographs of other carvings in the church. Uh, so I can look at these letters that I have a, a specification to match. So I can just have these out for visual reference. And more importantly, I have a sample carving here that I made and that uh, you can see here, letter carving with approvals written out on the back for the letter form and the font size, white oak wood and thickness of the wood, which on this project is one inch. And that's approved by the architect and then returned to me. So I have it here for a handy visual reference while I do this layout and the carving itself. So that's what's on the bench today.